guys. We're going to start a new lesson today, lesson 10-6 on parametric equations. Uh, this is a spot where we kind of make a shift in this chapter back away from conic sections and onto something different. So uh, we're going to look at parametric equations um, in this lesson. So let's get after it. Lesson 10-6. Right, in this lesson, our objectives are that we, um, one, evaluate sets of parametric equations for given values of a parameter. We're going to sketch the curves that are represented by sets of parametric equations, and then also to be able to rewrite sets of parametric equations as single rectangular equations uh, by eliminating the parameter. Uh, the equations that you're used to are rectangular um, equations, and so we're going to be introducing parametric equations. Obviously, you might be sitting here watching this video going, now what in the world are parametric equations? We'll get into that. All right. So uh, the sketch of, or the, yeah, the sketch of a parent set of parametric equations is called a plane curve. Um, and so uh, it says up to this point, you've been representing a graph by a single equation that just has two variables, right? Um, if we were graphing uh, linear functions, uh, they only have x and y as variables. Graphing uh, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, quadratic functions, cubic functions, uh, trigonometric functions, they all have really just two variables, x and y, or you know, with trigonometric uh, functions, maybe a y and theta or something. But um, the same idea uh, anyways, with an independent and dependent variable. Well, in this section, we're going to study situations, it says, in which it's useful to introduce a third variable to represent a curve in a plane. To see the usefulness, it says consider the path followed by an object that is propelled into the air at an angle of 45 degrees. So uh, we're going to try to make a case as to why um, parametric equations are helpful to us. Okay, so here is a rectangular equation. Okay, y equals negative x squared over 72 plus x that would represent the path of this object. Um, and that path is shown in this, uh, in this graph over here. If I was to graph um, y equals negative x squared over 72 plus x, it would look like this parabolic curve. But if we really think about what does x and what does y represent, x represents the horizontal distance that this object is away from us, and y represents the vertical distance that this object is from us. Okay, so I know that the, the data, the information that I know about this function is how far it is away horizontally, how high um, it, it is, okay, um, and those two related to one another. How high is it when it's such and such distance away, uh, or how far is it away when it's such and such height? We can find those pieces of information. But there's really specifically a, another key component that's missing. It says right here on this next slide, however, this equation does not tell the whole story. Although it tells us where the object has been, it does not tell us when the object was at a given point. You see, um, this set of, uh, this rectangular equation um, doesn't provide us as much information as we would like. It would be really helpful to know, okay, when uh, two seconds after uh, this object was launched or thrown or whatever, what was its height? What was, how far was it away? Uh, so it doesn't, the rectangular equation limits us to just where the object is, but not when the object is ever at that specific point. So it says to determine this time, we can introduce a third variable, t, and that's going to be very common that we use t, um, and it's called the parameter, all right? Uh, and this is why we have what are called parametric equations. So it's possible to write then uh, both x and y as, a f as functions of t. Okay, so here for this specific example, uh, these would be the two parametric equations. All right. And it will end up producing the same, uh, the same graph. However, you'll notice on this graph something that's present that normally isn't. And that is, we have the direction of the graph. By introducing t, and if we think about t as being time, and how time um, as it passes increases, uh, we can represent what's called the orientation of this curve. Uh, 
so when t is zero, well, if I were to plug in zero for t into both of those parametric equations, you get the you get that x is zero, you get that y is also zero, so you get the ordered pair zero zero. You see, I think I mentioned it already, but I'll say it again. When we sketch parametric curves, um, parametric plane curves, we do this still on our rectangular coordinate system. Okay, we determine values for t. Um, and then we, uh, you know, using that, we then determine what x and y are uh, accordingly, and then we plot those ordered pairs still. Okay, so then as time grows, if I was to let t be 1, you'd end up with x being, what, 24 root 2. You'd get um, y being 24 root 2 minus 16, um, and you could plot that ordered pair. And then that would then now, because of those two sets of, uh, times that you use, you can now see the direction or the orientation of the curve. Okay. All right. So here, this is where they say really um, a lot of what I've already said for this particular motion problem, X and Y are continuous functions of T uh, and the resulting path is what's called a plane curve. Okay. So how do we um, define a plane curve? If Two functions are continuous functions of t on an interval, and the set of ordered pairs is the plane curve. And that is kind of getting into then how we graph this. We determine what x is by evaluating f of t, or uh, x of t really, and then what y is based on what y of t, um, or in this case they write it as g of t is, uh, and then we plot each of those ordered pairs, and then we put the direction or the orientation on the curve. Okay? so x of t, y of t, in this case f of t and g of t are our parametric equations, and t is called the parameter. So here they get into, this is more of what I was referring to, here is where they get into, um, let me mute my computer so that you don't hear my emails coming. Um, sketching a plane curve, this is what I've already described. We're going to pick increasing values of t, uh, plug them in, substitute them into the parametric equation, uh, figure out what x of t is, what y of t is, and plot those as ordered pairs. Okay, and then in plotting them in order of increasing values of t, we will trace the curve in a specific direction, and that's called the orientation. All right, um, that's kind of the lead up, uh, the, the meat and potatoes of, of what is a parametric equation, or what are parametric equations, I should say, because they're plural, um, and how to graph. So let's take a look at doing this more concretely. Here's an example. Sketch this curve by the parametric equations. Notice we're given x in terms of t, so that's why we could call that function x of t, uh, as t squared minus 4, and y is a function of t, as t divided by 2. And then they tell us an interval for the uh, parametric equation, or for the parameter. t is going to be between negative 2 and 3. Okay? All right, so uh, let me switch on over to the whiteboard. I've gone ahead and copied this problem on down. And this is how we would go about doing this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start plotting ordered pairs um, based on these parameter values. So probably what's easiest is if I were to make a, especially for uh, teaching purposes, if I were to make kind of a, um, a T table that has an extra column, and I was to call this T, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. We'll just go in integer value increments. And then we're going to figure out what x is, what y is, and then we're going to plot these ordered pairs. Okay, so when x, uh, excuse me, when t, I'm used to saying x, when t is negative 2, what is x? Well, negative 2 quantity squared is 4, 4 take away 4 is 0. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Okay, so there's an ordered pair. Picture your parentheses and a comma. There's an ordered pair that we're going to plot um, that represents when the parameter is negative 2. And so if this was time, which uh, the context doesn't really make a ton of sense because you're including negatives, um, but if this was time, x is 0, so it's this particle, let's say, is 0 units away horizontally and negative 1 units away vertically. Okay. Substitute negative 1 in for t. Negative 1 quantity squared is 1. Take away 4 is negative 3. And negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half. Substitute 0 in for t. You get 0 squared, or 0, take away 4, is negative 4. 
and 0 divided 2 is 0. Substitute 1 in for t. 1 squared is 1. Take away 4. That's negative 3. And 1 half. Substitute 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 take away 4. 0. And 2 divided 2. 1. Substitute 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 take away 4. 5. And 3 divided by 2. 3 halves. 1.5. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and plot these um, plot these ordered pairs on our rectangular coordinate system. So it looks like I've got really get out to negative 5 or negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, call that 1. Okay, let's plot these points. 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1. I'm going to put a filled in dot here. This is the, the, the set of parameters or the interval for which I'm supposed to graph this. Starts at negative 2 and includes negative 2, so that dot is a filled in dot. Negative 3, negative 1 half. Negative 3, negative 1 half. Okay, now keep in mind the orientation of this curve. It's, it's going this way. I started here, and as t increases, as our parameter increases, I'm moving to that point. Okay, now I'm going to see more points than just this in order to see the shape of this plane curve. Uh, negative 4, 0. Negative 3, 1 half. Ah, you can start to see a curve here, right? So I'm okay going like this. Keep going. 0, 1, 5, 3 halves. Trying to make this a smooth curve. Okay. And so make sure that when you're drawing your sketches, you are indeed putting the orientation by just a little arrow to a few, few locations. Okay. So there is the sketch of the plane curve that we're looking for. Okay, so hopefully that helps make sense of what does it mean to, to sketch or to graph a set of parametric equations. Uh, we utilize our parameter. Uh, most times the parameter is going to be given. If not, you can uh, pick values of t uh, and you know, keep increasing those values of t so that you can see the orientation of the plane curve. All right. All right, let's continue on. Make sure that I didn't goof. There they made a table of values of the parameter and found their corresponding x and y uh, points for your ordered pairs, just like I did. They sketched their plane curve, just like we did. And it says, notice the arrows on the curve indicate the orientation, yep. So if a particle were moving on this curve, it would start at the point zero, negative one, and it would move along the curve to the point five, three halves. All right, they want to talk about in this slide how these um, parametric equations are not unique to representing the same rectangular curve or rectangular graph. Um, so they go down here to say, if I was to take the time to graph x equals 4t squared minus 4 and y equals t on the parameter interval from negative 1 to 3 halves, you would notice that you would be graphing this exact same curve that we just did in example one. Okay. However, and they, they show them side by side here. Okay, here are those two curves. So if you don't believe what I said there, uh, if I was to plug in negative one into that second set of parametric equations, you'd get x being zero, you'd get y equaling negative one, and so thus you get the ordered pair zero, negative one, just like when we let the parameter be negative 2. We move on to, uh, say, t equals 0. Substitute that in there, you'd get x equaling negative 4, y equaling 0, just like we did when we had t equaling 0. And another point, say, t equals 1. Uh, 4 times 1 squared, 4, take away 4, x is 0, y is 1. Just like on the first one that we did, where t was equal to 2, etc. So, 
hopefully what you see here is, man, this other set of parametric equations produce the exact same plane curve. But the only thing that's ultimately different about them is our interval. You see on the first one, it was over the parameter interval from negative two to three, versus the second one was over the parameter interval from negative one to three halves. And so ultimately the main difference that we can say about these is especially if you think about t in terms of time, which often cases it is, and it's the, one of the most uh, appropriate uses of, uh, in a contextual situation of the parameter is time, that plane curve would have been, the second one would have been graphed more rapidly or faster than the first one because it was a shorter interval of time, okay? It's just from negative one to three halves or an elapsing, what, 2.5 or two and a half seconds, if that's time in terms of seconds, versus the first one from negative two to three, which is a, a lapse or uh, a passing of five units of time or seconds, maybe, okay? So um, that's the main difference with that second set of parametric equations. And it's just an important thing to mention that we can have more than one set of parametric equations that produces the same rectangular curve or plane curve in this case, okay? All right, so uh, in applications, different parametric representations can be used to represent various speeds at which objects travel along a given path, okay? All right, next we're gonna talk about, okay, so we've been working with parametric equations. How could I go from having a set of parametric equations and figure out what is the rectangular equation? Basically, how could I algebraically, one way of describing what we're talking about, how could I algebraically show or prove that the set of parametric equations listed there in figure 10.53 ends up producing the exact same rectangular equation as the set of parametric equations in figure 10.54, okay? And that's through a process called eliminating the parameter. And this makes sense that it would be called eliminating the parameter because in a rectangular equation, you don't have the parameter. So we need to figure out how can I eliminate the parameter to see if these two equations, sets of parametric equations are the same. Um, or if I just am curious about what is the rectangular equation? Maybe in, the, in order to help me graph this parametric equation, if I have an idea as to what the rectangular equation is, that might give me a little more understanding about what, I, what it is I'm graphing. Okay, so eliminating the parameter. It's kind of a couple step process that they um, show here uh, in this diagram. You start with your parametric equations. We're gonna solve for t in one of the equations, okay? And then we're gonna substitute it into the other equation and simplify and we get a rectangular equation. So honestly, this should feel a lot like uh, the substitution method for solving systems. Um, we're gonna take one of our equations, solve for one of its variables, substitute into the other equation, right? That's the beginning part of the, um, the substitution method for solving systems. Okay. Now, um, if we were to do that on um, and this is what they've done, is that set of parametric equations that they started with was the exact set that we went ahead and we graphed, um, and we got the rectangular equation 4y squared minus 4. If I were to do that with that other set, I were to do that with the set of parametric equations there in figure 10.54, well, that's actually almost trivial. It's almost already done. If y is t, then I ought to be able to just replace t in the x of t uh, equation, parametric equation, with the letter y, and then it would read x equals four y squared minus four. Remember that, x equals four y squared minus four. Look what it says our rectangular equation is for the first one, the one that we did in our example. The rectangular equation, x equals four y squared minus four. There the algebra doesn't lie. There the algebra tells us yes, that first set of parametric equations, the ones that we practice graphing, is exactly the same, or at least produces the exact same shape or curve as um, that second one, okay? And again, why is this sometimes helpful? Well, from uh, and this is kind of why this falls into the chapter that it does, look at this, x equals four, y squared minus four. We know something about that, okay? If I've got x equals y squared, uh, four y squared, x equals, 4y squared minus 4, 
uh, we should know just by looking at this, that this is a parabola. So let's put this in a standard form. Um, I need to get y squared by itself. So I'm going to factor out this 4. Um, actually, let's go ahead and add 4. So you get x plus 4 equals 4y squared. And we'll divide by both sides by 4, multiply by 1 fourth. So you get y squared equals 1 fourth times x minus 4 excuse me, x plus 4, right? Okay, and so what does this tell us? This tells us, uh, this is the standard form of a parabola. Okay, now y squared. It's either going to open left or right, right? Because y squared. It has a vertex at, okay, um, h comma k, remember? h being what's being subtracted from our x coordinate, or our x value, okay, which would be negative 4, and k being what's being subtracted from our y. Nothing is. So it's going to have a vertex that's negative 4, 0. This is a value of 4p. So 4 times p equals 1 fourth. Well, if 4 times p is 1 fourth, that directed distance p is a positive in order for this to be a positive 1 fourth. Okay? And so thus we actually know not just that it's opening left or right, but specifically it's opening to the right. Oh, look at this graph. Look where its vertex is. It's a parabola right, that has a vertex at negative 4, 0, and it's opening to the right. So the rectangular equation that we can get by eliminating the parameter can help us a little bit, give us more information about the graph of the plane curve. Okay, so that's one of the uses of eliminating a parameter. All right. That's what they're talking about right here um, in this next slide that says now you can recognize that that equation represents a parabola with a horizontal axis uh, and uh, vertex at negative 4, 0. Okay, so when converting equations from parametric to rectangular, you may though need to alter the domain of a rectangular equation so that its graph matches the graph of the parametric equations, such as the situation as, as is demonstrated in example 2. We're going to take a look at what is mentioned there. Uh, this will make more sense with a concrete example. So let's take a look at this example two they refer to. And it's asking us to sketch the curve represented by these equations by eliminating the parameter and adjusting the domain of the resulting rectangular equation. Okay. So they're wanting us to use the rectangular equation, in other words, to help us sketch the curve of this. Okay, so let's eliminate the parameter, um, and then let's talk about this adjusting the domain thing. This is the hard part um, for students in this lesson, I think. But it doesn't need to be. All right, so let's eliminate the parameter. So when we're uh, eliminating the parameter, those steps were uh, take one of your parametric equations, and we're going to solve for the parameter. So which of these two does it appear would be easiest to solve for the parameter t? I would contest that it's easier to solve for t in this one. So let's do that algebra. If I'm to solve for t, one thing that I could do is I could square both sides to get rid of the square root. So I could go ahead and say x squared is equal to 1 over t plus 1. Do you agree with that? Then, in order for me to solve for t, I need to solve for t as t is in the numerator not in the denominator. So um, I could do one of two things. I could multiply both sides uh, of this equation by the, by the denominator, or I could just say, well, the reciprocal of this side has to equal the reciprocal of that side. So I could say the following. You say 1 over x squared it has to equal t plus 1. And then I'm so close to solving for t, I'd say subtracting 1 on both sides, that t is equal to 1 over x squared minus 1. Okay, or if we like seeing just one fraction, I could rewrite that as 1 minus x squared all over x squared. There's my t. Okay, so then the next step of um, eliminating a parameter says to take what t is and substitute it into the other parametric equation. So I want to know then what is y of this thing. So y equals 1 minus x squared over x squared divided by 1 minus x squared over x squared plus 1. 
This is what's called a complex fraction. Um, this was something that you should have worked on in uh, honors geometry last year because this is part of our appendix in our book. Uh, the, the fastest way of probably clearing up a complex fraction is multiplying um, the numerator and denominator by the least common denominator um, of our fractions. So x squared by times the top by x squared times the bottom by x squared. Ultimately, I'm just multiplying by 1, and so this is perfectly legal. And we get x squared to cancel, so I have 1 minus x squared over... All right, when I multiply this, I've got two terms down here. I get a 1 minus x squared when I multiply that first fraction by x squared, but then plus another x squared. Those sets of parentheses are not necessary since I'm just adding, and we get y equals 1 minus x squared all over, oh look, negative x squared plus an x squared makes zero, so all over one. So ultimately, there it is, y equals 1 minus x squared. That is our rectangular equation. So now when it comes to graphing that, let me get a second whiteboard here. So now, when it comes to graphing that, um, I'm going to be thinking about, when I'm set, graphing this set of parametric equations, I'm going to be thinking about graphing this. Okay, so again, x of t equals 1 over the square root of t plus 1, and y of t was t over t plus 1. Okay. All right, so let's get back to what is this question asking? It's asking us, though, to sketch the curve represented by these equations um, using the rectangular equation as a guide. So would you agree that it might be easier for you to think of this this way? <clears throat> that right there is a, um, is a parabola that opens down and has its vertex at 0, 1, right? Um, and so when I graph this thing, I know that I'm going to have 0, 1, let's make this um, 0, 1, and it's opening down, okay, so I also know that um, there's no vertical stretch or shrink on this, there's no horizontal stretch or shrink on this, so uh, my traditional, um, and this is kind of just my parent function, it's been reflected down and shifted one up, so I know that I can go over one, down one, both directions, over two, down four, one, two, three, four. And my plane curve is going to look something like this. Now, we have to um, factor in something else, though. This is actually not the answer. It's not the answer for multiple reasons, not just because I haven't put the orientation on. I need to think about domain. You see, this set of parametric equations actually is not 100% equivalent to this rectangular set, okay? Because there's extra information here uh, that's not converted over to the rectangular form. And that is, look at this function and how it's defined for x of t. And they are so kind to tell us, hey, think about, consider adjusting the domain if necessary. Um, what do I know ultimately about x of t and its limitations? Well, since I have a square root in the denominator, I can only take a square root of, um, well, zero or a positive, so non-negative numbers. Um, so if that's the case, well, ultimately, since this is in the denominator, I can't take a square root of zero either, can I? No. Um, and so, not take the square root of zero, I could take the square root of zero, but I can't divide by zero, right? Uh, so in that case, my, um, I can only be doing 1 divided by some positive. Well, 1 divided by a positive is going to be a positive value. So I need to realize from looking at how the set of parametric functions is defined that my domain is limited to just positive values of x. I don't have just positive values of x graphed here. I've got 
positives right over here, zero, and negatives graphed, okay? So when I um, eliminate the parameter and it says adjust the domain, I've got to say no, my domain for this, okay? So in order to match this, must be x's that are greater than zero or zero to infinity. I don't care how you write it, but um, that needs to be mentioned when it talks about adjusting the domain. Okay, so let's adjust our, our graph then. Our, our graph can't be this for this set of parametric equations because I just learned that x can only be greater than zero. So hopefully you'd agree that this cannot be a part of my graph. And ultimately, that this point right here doesn't actually exist. And so it'd be an open circle. All right. Now, last thing we need to determine, because when we're graphing those plane curves and we're graphing sets of parametric equations, we need to be thinking about orientation. So what is the orientation? A particle on here, is it coming up this way and coming to a stop right there? Or is it falling down this way? So let's just think about it in terms of picking some values of t. When t equals 1, x, that's not an x, x of 1 is how much? 1 divided by 1 plus 1, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, the square root of 2 is root 2, okay, so 1 divided by root 2, or we could say root 2 over 2, right, or approximately 0 0.707, okay, well what's y at that time? y of 1, uh, y of 1 is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1, so that's 1 over 2, okay? And now let's consider t equals 2. When t equals 2, what's happening? Uh, x of 2, 2, is equal to 1 over 2 plus 3 inside that radical, so that's, uh, I'm thinking ahead of myself, 1 over 2 plus 1, uh, so that's 1 over the square root of 3 or root 3 over 3, okay? Well, what's root 3 over 3? Root 3 over 3, root 3 divided by 3 is 0 0.577 approximately. Oh, so I think we're going to find something here. y of 2 is 2 divided 2 plus 1, so that's 2 divided... 2 plus 1, 2 thirds, so this is 0.6 repeated, right? Or I guess it's exactly that with the repeat end on it. Um, so what do we learn here? Did I screw up something? 1 over the square root of 2 is that. And 1 plus uh, 1 is 2, 1 half. And then so we had the 0.7 and a half. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't mess anything up. Okay. Um, so yeah, if I was to look at this and see where are these points on this rectangular curve that I plotted, um, 0 0.707 and a half, that's when t equals 1, and then 0.57, uh, and a little bit higher up, 0.6 repeating, there is where t equals 2. So what is the orientation of this curve? Our orientation is this way. Okay. So that's how I would go ahead and do that second problem. Again, we went ahead and eliminated the parameter by taking one of our equations, this one, it doesn't matter which one you do, but I think we would really struggle to try to solve for t here when there's two locations for t. I think this was a little bit easier. Um, we took our uh, x of t parametric equation, solved for t, um, and found that t equals 1 minus x squared all over x squared. We then substituted that into the other parametric equation and solve for, or simplified for uh, what y equals, and we found y equals one minus x squared. So in order to help us graph this set of parametric equations, which is kind of an ugly set of parametric equations, I realized, wait, it's just this. It's just y equals one minus x squared. Well, that's a parabola that opens down and uh, is shifted up one unit. So 
here is my parent function parabola that was opening down and shifted up. And then we said, wait, there's some extra stuff that we needed to carry over, some extra baggage that these parametric equations came with. They came with the fact that x had to be greater than zero because of this radical in the denominator, okay? Um, so anyways, that's that. Um, and yeah, I think we, we did pretty well on that. Um, I think we could also probably say here, just thinking right now in my mind, um, that t, t has to be uh, greater than negative one. Is that accurate? You see, if t equaled negative one, then this ends up being a zero in the denominator, and I can't divide by zero. Uh, if t is anything less than negative one, then I end up taking a square root of a negative. That's not uh, a real number. So t has to be also greater than negative one. Uh, if that's the case, then we can actually say um, well, actually, I don't know that we can, um, so never mind. But that is a true fact, but that doesn't need to necessarily be mentioned. That's kind of the implied domain of that uh, X parametric equation. All right, moving on. And I think you'll see they'll do something very similar. Uh, so they took that X parametric equation, they solved for T. And it's kind of a waving of the hand, but uh, we got the same result. We substituted that into the y parametric equation, simplified by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the least common denominator, x squared. And we just get nice pretty 1 minus x squared as a result. Okay, so what does this tell us? From that rectangular equation, we know that it's a parabola that opens down and has its vertex at 0, 1. And then here's where they start going into the fact that um, we know that we're dealing with a uh, adjusted domain that's necessary, okay? So, there you have it. And just like we did, they had to only sketch that portion um, as they, they graphed the um, plane curve. All right, so as is, I've mentioned before, it's important to realize that eliminating the parameter is primarily just for the purpose to help us in sketching the curve, okay? Um, it says if a parametric equation represents the path of a moving object, the graph alone is not sufficient to describe the object's motion. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, remember, we saw two graphs that really had the same shape to them we still need the parametric equations in order to tell us our position, our direction, and our speed. Okay? All right, so well, ultimately that's kind of the end of this first part of Lesson 10.6 that uh, I wanted to cover with you. Hopefully you feel like, okay, I have a little bit of a grasp as to what is a set of parametric equations. Um, there are two equations um, and that are both defined as functions on t. Uh, t being a parameter that sometimes we're given uh, an interval for which t lives, sometimes we aren't. Um, hopefully you're comfortable with how to graph a set of parametric equations. Hopefully you're, um, you're feeling really comfortable about how to sketch those um, or how to um, eliminate the parameter as well. Okay, so let's take a look at one last uh, exit test question in order to just get an extra example in here uh, for further practice. Okay. So this is really same directions as we saw in this last one, but I think you're going to find this is a little bit easier of a problem. So we're given two parametric equations, and we're asked to sketch the curve and eliminate the parameter. So in sketching the curve here, these don't look too terrible, uh, so I would probably go ahead and uh, just make a quick little t-table here. We're just going to pick some values. Uh, t table is probably wrong. I don't know what you call it, an h table now. Uh, t, x, y. Um, and let's just say uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Good enough. Okay, when I plug in uh, t equaling 0, I get 2 and 0. Plug in t equaling 1, I get 3 and 1. t equaling 2, I get 4 
and four, three, I get five and nine, okay? Um, let's throw in negative one. We're not told anything. Nothing says that T can't be negative. Uh, so negative one and we get one and one and let's even do negative two as well. So negative two, I get zero and four. Okay, so let's sketch this. Alrighty, we're pretty much dealing only with positive y's. Here we go. And we're going to go up to 9. So 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so 2, 0, 2, 0, 3, 1, 4, 4, 1, 2, 4. And five nine. Okay, and then my I also had a one one and zero four. Okay, so you can see that we are dealing with this here. We're not given any limitations on t no interval for which t and so i do have arrows meaning those two sides do keep going okay but however i still haven't represented the orientation so starting here at one one uh sorry even zero four and then i went to one one as uh, i started at negative two and then i got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger okay so zero four to one one to uh zero uh sorry um, two zero to three one to four four etc. So I think you can tell that the orientation of this plane curve is that way. Okay, so there I've done part A. Part B says to eliminate the parameter. So this is really part A, part B. Eliminate the parameter. I need to solve one of these for the parameter t. I think it's easiest to solve here. So if x equals t plus 2, then t equals, subtract the 2 over, x minus 2, and then I'm going to substitute this into the other equation. So then we get y equals x minus 2 quantity squared. Okay, so there is my rectangular equation as a result. Um, and take a look. Does this look like x minus 2 quantity squared? From your understanding early in this uh, course, we talked about how this is uh, a, a parent function x squared that is just now shifted transformationally to units to the right. Isn't that exactly what it looks like? I think so. Okay, now as, uh, it says adjust the domain as necessary. So is there anything, going back to looking at um, the set of parametric equations, where my focus is, if they're saying adjust the domain, I'm thinking about x. Okay, so is there any limitation, any baggage that x carries when I come over to the rectangular equation? I don't think so, right? There's nothing that X can't be. X can be positives, negatives, zero, all of those things. And we see actually that right here in this table. Uh, you see zero and positives, but had I gone to say negative three, negative three for T, I'd get a negative value for X, okay? So uh, ultimately um, the domain is all real numbers here for X and that carries over here. So there is no adjusting the domain necessary, okay? now. Just to make sure that you see that this could have been done, um, I mentioned earlier how I said that uh, it doesn't matter which equation you solve for. So let's say I solved um, the y equals t squared in, for t um, in the process of eliminating the parameter. You get t equals the technically plus or minus the square root of y, right? And then um, I'm going to go ahead and substitute this into the other one, and you'd get uh, x equals plus or minus the square root of y plus 2. And if I solve this for, um, for y and bring that 2 on over, you get x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of y. What gets rid of a square root is squaring. No matter what, if I squared, and what you know, Whatever this value was that's, and it's positive, I get the same thing as if I squared whatever this value is and it's negative, right? Squaring a positive and its opposite produces the same thing. So when I square both sides, this does just produce 
y, and this makes x minus 2 quantity squared, and I want you to see we would have gotten the same thing. I just think this was a little bit easier to work with in the process of eliminating the parameter. It was a few less steps, but um, it doesn't matter which one you um, try to solve for, just sometimes one of them is easier um, than the other. Okay, or sometimes you can run into problem solving for one of them, but if both of them can easily be solved for the parameter, it doesn't matter which way you go is how I probably should say that. Okay, so hopefully that helps serve as an introduction to parametric equations. Um, again, a set of parametric equations are two equations, um, one for x that is a function of t and one for y that's a function of t. Uh, with those, we can uh, sketch a plane curve uh, and represent the orientation, the direction of that curve. We can also eliminate our parameter, um, and that's what really what we worked on uh, in this lesson. So hopefully this helps. Um, as you run into questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Hope you're still doing well and being safe. We'll catch you later.